Okay, I have a question. Do you? Great. Do you ever dream that you're in nope. a group? <laughs> what, never? Never. You never ever dream about anything? What do you want me to say? No, I'm sorry, but I don't dream. I guess I'm not one of those kind of people. Oh, I dream all the time. Of course you do. I don't always remember them, mind you, and sometimes they don't make any sense. You know, like the ones where you're running around madly looking for something like it's lost, but you have no idea what it is. Oh, once I had a dream where I was in this giant warehouse full of shelves. On these shelves were hundreds and hundreds of pairs of glasses. Not the good kind, the kind you drink out of, the kind you use and you need to see. So after a while of me just standing there, I thought to myself, oh, well, if there's that many of them just sitting doing nothing, I may as well try a few on. <laughs> see which ones look good on me something to do, right? Well, the moment I moved closer, an invisible hand grabbed me by the ankle and lifted me up in the air, started slamming me up against the ceiling, the walls, the floor, <laughs> anywhere that was hard enough to hurt. I woke up screaming after <laughs> that one, I can tell you. <laughs> what do you make of them apples? I don't know. Maybe you need new reading glasses and it was on your mind when you fell asleep. Uh, I also had this one recurring dream. You know, one that keeps cracking up. I know what recurring means. I'm not a complete idiot. So in this dream. It, really? You're just going to skip straight past that one, are you? No apology. Nothing. I am the proprietor of a not-too-shabby second-hand bookshop. Whoa, you crazy beast. Not a shop owner. Slow the world. I want to get off. <laughs> but it isn't just a bookshop, you see. I also sell tea and cakes. That way, if people want a little sit down or maybe have a chat about books or something, they can. You know, even in your dreams, you are the most boring person I know. Now, the really weird thing about this shop is that it isn't in my hometown. Oh no, it isn't where I live now. And I'm not a hundred percent here, but I'm pretty sure that it's in the town where Murder, She Wrote was set. Hey, you know, small, friendly, and coastal. Maine. Hey, you what now? Murder, She Wrote. It was set in Maine, famous for its lobsters, also blueberries, I think. Oh, I, I didn't know that you were such an authority. <laughs> Neither did I, if I'm honest. The information just sort of popped into my head. I must have read it somewhere and forgotten it. So anyway, in my dream, it always goes the same way. I'm happy because I'm talking about books and drinking tea all day. I mean, who wouldn't be, right? The mister is happy because I have something to keep me busy. He knows I'm a bright pain in the hair is when I'm bored. And just the way I am, everything is going great guns until I get this one customer who asks me for something that I don't sell. I'm not always the same person and not always the same request, just something unusual. <laughs> you follow? That you dream about being middle-aged while being middle-aged? Yeah, I think I'm with you so far. 
Now, here is the strange thing. In my last dream, the one I had yesterday, this man asks me if I can sell him a shirt, a printed t-shirt. I'm fairly sure they already exist. But I run a bookshop, right? So I should tell him, no, go somewhere else. But I don't. I say, yes. I start blabbering out about how I know how to print t-shirts that I do it all of the time. How people all over town own various items of clothing that I have adorned with quotes from all sorts of books on them. I even challenge him to name one, any line from any book from Shakespeare to Pratchett, I can print it. <laughs> That's the strange part. That the dream version of you knows how to put other people's words onto clothing. Then, <laughs> then it all gets proper bizarre. This guy, he turns out to be a musician. And what he wants is a shirt with the words, Antonio Salieri was an innocent man on it. <laughs> How mad is that? <laughs> on a scale of one to, I don't give a damn. You get it, right, Salieri? Because of what they said about him in the film, about him hating Mozart and him having a hand in his death and all that. Of course, it was all made up for the sake of the film, but how weird is that? <laughs> and that's the whole dream? You keep having the same dream? <laughs> well, well, yeah. Yeah. Apart from the musician guy, the customer changes, I told you that. That is not a dream. I don't know what it is, but it's way too normal to be a dream. Uh, how would you know? You said you never had them. That kind of dream I can live without. The only dreams I would want would feature Benedict Cumberbatch, and a large tub of strawberry ice cream. Uh, I don't think it works like that. The dream picks you. you. You don't pick it. Clearly. Or you would have done something much more exciting with yours. I don't know. Sounds like a good life to me. <laughs> That's my point exactly. It sounds like life. Dreams should be fiction, fun. Not semi-retirement. I was only making conversation. <laughs> were you, though? Or were you just filling the silence again? Oh, shut up and eat your sandwich. Now that, dear girl, is one hell of an idea. And what you got tonight? Corned beef and mustard. And you, chicken again? chicken again and don't say that's boring as if i would you want to though don't you oh i do so go on then you are so ball numbingly Boring. <laughs> I know. I don't mind. 